guys. Hey. All right, everyone. Well, welcome to uh, our first uh, weekly press conference with Coach Sumlin. Uh, getting ready for Saturday's game against BYU. Uh, we're just going to go ahead and open up for questions. Does it uh, feel like it's taken forever to get to this point? Not forever, no. It, uh, actually, it's gone by pretty quickly since August 2nd. Um, you know, I think uh, since we've gotten into camp, uh, I think our guys have done a, a, a really nice job of getting better, um, blending as a team, getting to know each other a little bit more. The addition of the young guys uh, from the summer actually helps, you know, uh, the new rule with adding five guys, you know, 110 players instead of 105. Um, doesn't seem like much, but it, it does once you start to get in the middle of fall camp and in, in training camp and, you know, numbers get down. But I, I think our guys have handled it very well. Um, and, um, you know, it's game week now. And instead of just really the last week we started that, as I told you guys, that there are really opponent preparation. So um, instead of just calling plays and defenses and going against each other, seeing some schemes that we're going to see this week. And um, we, we've got a, a real challenge this week. Um, you, you look at a team that uh, BYU is a, a well-coached team. Um, you know, they finished sixth in the country last year in total defense um, with – uh, a lot of their players back, and uh, it'll be as large a team as, as we'll face this year. They, you know, a couple 340 pounders inside uh, the defensive end is, you know, he's massive at 6'8, 6'9, 280. So, this is going to be a large football team with a lot of guys that are coming back um, on, a, on a really, really good defense from a year ago. So, you know, but it's a new year, it's a, it's a big challenge for us, and, and, uh, I think like we say every year, you know, we'll know more, more about this team about 10.30 Saturday night than we know about them right now. What give you most hope about your defense? Uh, experience. I think uh, continuity and experience, um, much like the defense we're going to play Saturday night, you know. Uh, you know the, the, we didn't have the success that they did, um, the BYU did last year, but – we had some outstanding efforts and players and, and the freshman player of the year, the league. Um, all those guys are back. And, uh, you know, I, I like where we are up front with the, with the kind of attitude that, that, uh, that, that these guys have, have brought. I think uh, um, it's just a, a chemistry. And, and like I said, we, we're, we're going to see. But uh, we've got – we do have more experience. And like they say, you know, the best thing about a freshman in football is that he becomes a sophomore. So if that's the case, then we ought to be a little bit better than we were last year. So you mentioned, you mentioned um, earlier that you don't have a lot of experience with the opponents that are on your schedule right. this year. So given that, you know, you haven't faced BYU in however many long it's been. Since I was you, a graduate assistant at Washington State. How, <laughs> that, how has that affected how you've prepared for this game and who have you leaned on to kind of. Oh, you, you, you know, you've got. You know, we all have friends in the business, you know, so um, and everybody talks, you know, there are no secrets and um, coaches are the biggest copycats in the world. That's the, they won't admit that. But, you know, you get your video can only tell you so much. And uh, really, until you get on the field, you know, you got to you got to figure that out. But, yeah, we, we talk to different coaches and I'm sure that, you know, They've, they've done the same thing based on us having a new staff here. So um, that's just part of the game. But, you know, we'll see. I think for us, it, you know, they, they are who they are defensively because they've, they've been really, really good on defense. I think our challenge is, is trying to, you know, see offensively who, they, who they're going to be uh, with Coach Grimes coming. And, um, you know, I'm, we've got some familiarity with him. And from the other league and, and a lot of shift trade motion some things that uh, you know we've had to work very very hard on to try to be prepared but there's always new stuff in a new game in, a, in the first game and um, I think uh, you know with with the stuff that uh, coach Grimes has shown you know you, you've got to be prepared for um, for those types of shifts and, and trades and, and make sure that you're sound and gap sound because it, you get one guy a gap, you know, for for what they do, and 
and it can it can cause you some real problems. And so we got to just you know we've been working very very hard at uh, alignment and assignment, and and uh, you know if, if if we have that the way it should be, then we can just cut it loose and, and play. In your experience, what what is week one of the college football season like for you personally? Well, it all depends. You know, for me, it's exciting. Like you said, you know, it's uh, it's just, um, it's the beginning of the year. I mean, for us, you know, for fans, it's a big deal. I mean, we've been going at it here since you know August second, and uh, you know, guys get kind of tired, kind of tired of is this is right on time here, huh? Um, We've just been going at it for for you know the last three weeks, and so I think our guys are anxious to really get on the field and play and instead of just playing against each other. You know, we'll get the crowd, get get the fans, and and uh, and uh, instead of just being out there. So our guys are excited, and uh, you know I think the, I think our students are excited. Uh, we had pep uh, pep rally. I said we we moved out of. Arizona Stadium into McHale. It was like an old-fashioned high school pep rally in there. I told Sean, he did everything but run through the paper hoop. So our, our students are fired up, and uh, I think it, it, that really, really helps because you can feel it on campus that, that uh, ready to get the season going. Along those lines, Kevin, what do you feel about the community? Are you getting any sense of their excitement? Yeah, I think so. I think uh, I've had a lot of people tell me how excited they are. You know, it's... Uh, uh, just at, at different restaurants, gas stations, you know, and, and uh, um, I think there's, I think there's some, some excitement, you know, wherever I've been, people have been, as I've said, they've been, they've been nothing but great to, to me, to family, to our coaches, and, and uh, you know, everybody wants to, is, is excited, is what I hear, everybody wish, wishes us good luck, and, and uh, and the majority of them say they're going to be there on Saturday night, so that helps too. And I, you know, I, I, I think it's important, as I told our students last uh, Friday, that uh, you know, uh, fans do have an effect. They have an effect on the, on on our team from an energy standpoint, um, and they can affect the game and and play a role in the game with you know, particularly with people on the road at night and, and communication on third down and, and things like that. So. Um, you know, the more the merrier, and, and the louder the better. So it's that's that's basically what we want. But you know, we we've, we've also got to put the product on the field that that makes that. So that it works together, and, and uh, um, you know, we're we're looking forward to Saturday. Getting back to um, Coach Grimes, he's not been a play caller. Is that correct? Uh, you know, when when people say that, you know, there's there are times when and throughout people's lives where there's a coordinator that's a play caller um, then there's guys that you know when you've been where he's been and uh, dealing with some of the better offensive lines in, in the country you, you don't go through the week or through the year without making more than suggestions I'll put it that way <laughs> so you know often uh, as I said before often you know guys get in the rhythm and, and people talk in between series and uh, a lot of decisions are made, and you don't make those decisions without um, really talking about what's going on up front. So he's been around long enough, um, and you know there's been plenty of coaches who, that um, may not have been the primary play caller that have called a lot of plays. You mentioned this; since it's been a while since you've coached against BYU. But do you prepare any differently from them since? They're kind of the only team in the country that has a bunch of 24, 25 year olds versus a, a team that's a little younger. No, we just we, not really. You know, we addressed it early. You know, there there'll be some older guys. You know that like, um, heck, I remember when Tanner, their quarterback, was the first year he started. I mean, that seems like a long time ago, but and it was. And and, uh, but you know, the, he's an experienced guy. That's just part of it. And uh, you know, that's just it's it's. It's part of playing this game. We don't, there's, you don't, there's nothing, what are you going to do, you know, to, to prepare any different? You prepare for your opponent. Um, we prepare for everybody just about the same and uh, worry more about, you know, where we are and what we're doing, just like we talked about defensively, you know, and schematically how we're, how we're going to handle uh, what they do. So now from a, uh, from an age or a situation, it's, it's just, it's out of your control. 
Any big takeaways from the mock game on Saturday? Um, yeah, I thought our guys handled it very well. I thought uh, we, you know, we had substitutions, things like that, try to make it as, as uh, critical situations, the end of the game plays, end of the half. Uh, you know, just, just those types of situations that come up um, so that our guys have gone through them. And um, so I thought, I thought uh, we had a brief piece of those types of sp uh, special team situations on, on Friday, which helped because we weren't very good Friday. Um, but I think after they, they understood what, the, what we're trying to do and, and the urgency and the focus that was needed by the whole team, we were a lot better Saturday in, in those situations, but um, you know, with, with special teams, offense, defensively, and so you know, first and second units were, were involved, and um, substitutions were involved on all those, and, and so you know, I thought I thought our coaches and our players handled it very well Saturday. Coach Mazzoni on the sideline or in the? Uh, he's on the sideline. How do you feel the offensive line is coming together at this point? Um, we're coming together. We, what do you mean? We we better be coming together uh, pretty quickly. So you know we we play and I think uh, you know it's uh, we've made some strides certainly in the last three four days um, in in with the, the mock game with Friday um, being what it was and then you know when we get back today you know we're not in pads today. Uh, we're in shocks and really working schematics. And then tomorrow and Wednesday, we're in full pads. So, um, you know, that, that this whole O-line situation has been being solidified. And so the rotation piece is out. And like I said, we'll probably get a depth chart out to you sometime this week. Is there a, would there still be competition for, the, for starting spots this week? Well, I, I'll put it this way. You know, with uh, Lath's situation, you know, it's, it creates a situation where he's he's not going to play. So, um, you know, you're, you're looking at two scenarios. You're looking at the first two games, right? And who's playing in that? And then when he comes back, now what? Right? Do you, are you are you moving somebody to right tackle, putting him at left? So all those scenarios are being addressed right now, not just for this week, but for the, the for the year. Um, when one of your better players is not playing the first two games, you know, so. Um, you know, what's the best five, what's the best five in what position, and then, you know, do you swing a guy three weeks from now and, and plug him back in? So what's what's easiest uh, for us is is uh, um, to get that solidified this week and have that plan for three weeks later, just for some consistency for, for guys that, that know where they're going to be in playing. How would you compare Khalil Tate's skill set to um, quarterbacks you have previously coached? Um, they're all different. Um, they're, they're all, they've all been different, whether they're 5'11 or 6'6. Six, six. So, you know, everybody, I, I've never really, and I've said this before, I've never really compared any of them to each other. They're all got different, all got different skill sets. They're, they're all, um, you know, from being at Washington State with Drew Bledsoe to, to, uh, you know, the Case Keenum or, or Drew Brees. They're, they're just all different. And, and so, and I think it's important just just to keep them in those in their own mold. I think that's what's important. I think you know you can win with any of those guys. Um, they're all been Sam Bradford. They're all been special talents, but they're they've all been different. And you know we're careful not to lock people into you know the comparison of Johnny Manziel or anything like that. They're, they're, everybody's different. So, um, but they've all been effective and they've all won a lot of games. So that's what that, that's what their our our goal is for Khalil. The uh, grad transfer market for quarterbacks seems to have even mutated more um, lately into something different where guys are leaving like on the eve of the season if they don't win the starting job. What, what do you think of that whole situation and how do you kind of manage the other quarterbacks on your roster? Well, it's uh, – I would say this. I, I, I don't see the quarterback – the quarterback situation gets more, more notoriety, but there's plenty of them. The guys that there's a whole, you know – it's become like free agency for college football. And, you know, a guy who's gone to a university, done everything that uh, that program has asked um, and has graduated, you know, and still has eligibility, there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, he's, he's you know, sometimes recruiting um, can, can be a brutal thing. 
And then, you know, that guy, you know, he still wants to play. So, um, but he's not going to play at that institution. I, I, I think that's, I think that's fair. And, you know, we've benefited from it and we've lost guys too. Do you have any update on the Texas A&M grad transfers? If they're eligible? Uh, no, they're not eligible right now. So an unusual situation arose with Santino specifically last week. What's the, what is going on with that whole situation with him? Uh, he was informed this morning that he's no longer on the team. Details that's it. Why or that's it. Um, you, you mentioned the offensive line um, earlier. How, how, what responsibility does the center have as far as reading the defense or uh, communicating information? And how has Josh McCauley done in that in that role? Um, I'd rather not give our opponents what our center does. In <laughs> so, is that fair? And what exactly he does, but he's his primary job is to snap it. So, you know, I'm not being smart, but it's you know some people do things a little bit differently with centers. Some some guys put things on other linemen to see because a lot of times in the shotgun, the center has his head between his legs and can't see, and so some people use other people to identify defenses. Some people use centers. Some people use all kinds of folks, running backs, because people with, with their eyes up so they can see. But our, our guys, uh, just like everybody else, they're important because they touch the ball every snap. So um, there's a lot going on for him. And uh, a little bit of pressure, a lot of pressure. So he and the quarterback got to be on the same page. Um, and uh, that's why consistency, to, to your point, consistency there with, with – Communication with with uh, our offensive line, communication with the quarterback, and and, and snap count. Um, you'd like to have that that position um, very very solid and stable, without moving guys around in there. A wildcat tradition that you particularly like, or is there maybe some type of plan for the locker room, or uh, that, that you're planning for the very first game as a coach here? No, no, I'm, I'm you know I'm kind of taking it all in myself, right? So. Um, you know, it, it, when we, we, I don't even know how we're getting here from the, the hotel. I mean, we, we're trying that right now. So I'm just figuring out, you know, we, we figured out where we, from what time we come out. And, you know, we, the part of the mock game situation was, hey, you know, we're this, this sideline, here's what we do pregame. You know, where's everybody warming up? So we've kind of gone through that, but uh, it's still a learning process for me, and, and uh, uh, which, which makes it even more exciting. Experimenting with shortening the halftime um, this year, does that play? Yes. Change. Yeah, we, we talked about there? that last week. It was 15 minutes this week. So, in it right, 15 minutes at halftime doesn't seem like a big deal, but it's it's uh, it's a it's a significant change in in terms of uh, communication, right? And and um, you know between coaches, primarily coaches get together first and talk about you know what's going on create a plan and then you have to you know get that information to the players um all the while guys are getting you know retaped or these there's certain things going on and hydration and all kinds of stuff so you have to be extremely organized in 15 minutes to get back out um warm up which is it takes at least two or three minutes so you don't have 15 minutes you know you've you got about 10 minutes to get things together and uh, so you got to be organized in what you do and, and and what goes on and then to get that information to the players and get them warmed back up and on the field to, to kick the ball off um we went through that this this weekend and uh it's a little bit it's a significant change you like it you dislike it i'm not sure i'm not sure yet you know it's a little bit more laid back last Saturday that it will be Saturday night, you know, so, uh, you know, it's a, we'll, we'll see, you know, it's, but it's a significant change. Coach One more question. Coach Yates said that um, he wanted to be too deep on defense. How mm -hmm. involved are you in encouraging that or yes. making sure that that happens? Yeah, we, we, we go through evaluations um, all the time and creating that competition during, during fall camp is important. Uh, and practicing these guys, you know, not just it, 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 how we're going to play them. And, you know, we, we talk here all the time about 
developing your job as a player to, to, is to develop um, help us develop trust in you and and that isn't on Saturday it's built through practice so your your other teammates need to trust you you need to demonstrate that you know what you're doing and you're going to do it you're going to make mistakes but you're going to do it to the best of your ability and in, in, in that um, we have an idea of what we're going to get from you on Saturday and so do the players around you so you know, we practice in that manner um, and with with too deep, and um, you know we feel pretty good about it, particularly defensively. All right, thank you, everybody. All right, thank you.